As developers, it can be a challenge to remember and communicate how data flows through our architecture. We could write out text heavy documents to try and explain it to the next developers, but as they say, a picture is worth a thousand words, so we're better off creating a diagram. A sequence diagram is an excellent way to communicate how data flows through our architecture. And in this video, we'll discuss how to use sequence diagrams to create documentation and how to generate sequence diagrams using mermaid.js. Hello developers and welcome to the PHP Architect channel. If this is your first time here, my name is Scott Keck Warren. And on this channel, we discuss a wide variety of topics related to the PHP ecosystem. Make sure you subscribe so you can get our latest videos as they're published. The Unified Modeling Language, or UML, was created by the software engineering field to set the standard way for how we visualize the design of software systems. It comprises of a series of diagram types that we can and should be using every day to document the design of our software, even if it's just for our own later use. One of these diagram types is the sequence diagram, or sometimes called the system sequence diagram, which is used to show interactions between elements horizontally and arranged in a time sequence vertically. The diagram will depict the processes and or objects and the sequence of messages that will be exchanged in order to carry out that functionality in our software. A sequence diagram uses parallel vertical lines called lifelines to show different process objects that exist simultaneously inside of an interaction and use horizontal arrows to explain how messages are exchanged between them and in what order. Now, there are several key elements to sequence diagrams that we need to discuss. The first are actors. An actor is a particular role performed by an entity in our diagram that interacts with the subject of our, of our process. Funny enough, we can use a little stick figure as an actor. Next is a lifeline. A lifeline represents a participant interaction using a horizontal line. Depending on the tool used to draw the diagram, it might be a solid line or it might be dashed. As the participant is performing an operation, it will become activated. We render these activations as a rectangle on the lifeline for the participant aligned with the initiation and completion of the operation. We'll use lines with arrows on one end of them to represent messages being both being called, which runs left to right, and returning, which learn, runs left to right, and self messages, which loop around. There are other messages like recursive, create, destroy, and duration that do essentially what they sound like. Let's go over some basic best practices for creating effective sequence diagrams. The first thing is to keep it simple. The goal is to communicate a process, so we want to make sure it's clear and concise in our diagrams and avoid unnecessary complexity. Include comments to better improve understanding of the sequence diagram if the tool you're using supports them. Make sure you use the appropriate symbols and connectors. By using random symbols, it makes it harder for others to read the diagram when they need it. As always, there's already a standard, so we should learn it and use it. Finally, make sure you validate and test your sequence diagrams against real world scenarios, if at all possible. Nothing is worse than having a wrong diagram when you really need it. Sequence diagrams themselves provide no requirement for how we generate them, so we have a lot of options. At the lowest level of technology, we can create our sequence diagrams using pen and paper or a whiteboard. Whiteboards are an excellent option if you're brainstorming with a group of people, and pen and paper are great for quickly working something out. Both of them suffer from the fact that it's hard to change our sequence diagrams as we come up with modifications, so it can get a little messy. The next level up is to use a program to draw the sequence diagrams. We can use word processing tools to generate basic sequence diagrams, and there are even programs like Visio, Lucidchart, and Diagrams.net that are specifically made for drawing diagrams. Again, these are awesome tools for people to use, but still suffer from drawbacks. The biggest being that the files that these programs generate can be a challenge to manage inside of our source control, and they tend to take a fair amount of effort to add and remove steps to make them look nice. If you've ever inserted an image in a Word document, you might know how it can quickly destroy the formatting in the rest of your document. If you couldn't tell already, I have another solution, and that's to use a tool to generate sequence diagrams from some sort of a text document. That would provide us with an easy way to define what the sequence diagram will look like without having to worry about laying it out, and we can easily include it as part of our source control as it just uses plain text to define the file. We can even embed it in other documents that support it. And we'll discuss that solution after this word from our sponsors. Do you want higher clarity in production, but don't have the time to earn a degree in observability? Me too. Forget logs, metrics, and traces. Honey Badger Insights is built around structured events. When you send your application's logs and other events to Honey Badger, you'll unlock the power of Honey Badger's powerful new query language, Badger QL. Then you can use Badger QL to ask any questions about your data, convert an event into a metric, and chart your metrics on custom dashboards. 
You can do all of this on Honey Badger's free plan as part of their comprehensive monitoring suite, which includes error tracking, uptime monitoring, status pages, and more. Speaking of error tracking, did you know that an error is really just a first class event in Honey Badger? In fact, you can use Insights and Badger QL to explore all of your existing Honey Badger data in new ways. It's pretty cool. Give it, give it a try today at honeybadger.io. That's honeybadger.io. So the solution to our problem is the syntax created by the mermaid.js project. Mermaid.js provides a command line tool that we can use to convert a text file containing markdown inspired text into all kinds of diagrams. Check out their documentation for a full list of their supported diagram types. A few that are important to us as developers are of course sequence diagrams, but there's also flowcharts and state diagrams, both of which we've covered in previous videos. If you want to try mermaid.js before installing it, or you want to let a non-developer try it out, they can do so using mermaid.live. It's a powerful online tool that allows you to type the diagrams out and see the results on the screen immediately. For example, today we're going to create a very basic sequence diagram that shows how a user requests a page from Apache, Apache sends a request to PHP, and then PHP renders the code. When we're writing our sequence diagrams in Mermaid, order matters. We'll be writing the sequence out, and each line will show up on the diagram working its way down from the top to the bottom. Other diagram types don't have this restriction, but it's something to keep in mind. To start our diagram, we're going to write the word sequence diagram to indicate to the Mermaid engine that we're creating a sequence diagram. Next, we're going to add a new line, tab over once, and write actor user to define our user as an actor. Then we're going to have to define the rest of our initial diagram using the steps on each line, where we have the name of the participant, an arrow, which in this case is the hyphen greater than greater than sign, the next participant, colon, and then a string indicating the message that's being passed. This will give us our very basic sequence diagram. Now, you can most likely stop here because you have most of the tools you need to be able to write a lot of sequence diagrams. But there are some nice features in Mermaid.js that you should know about. The first one being boxes. And boxes can be used to separate out a section. For example, if we wanted to put all of our interactions that occur on the web server inside of its own space to make it a little easier to read, we can create a box section. We'll say it's green and name it web server. We can then put the Apache and PHP participants inside of it. If we want to highlight what participant is active, we can use the activate and deactivate keywords with the name of the participant. If this is a little bit too complex, we can also use the plus and minus signs inside of the arrow definitions. We can add notes as well, which is helpful for helping people understand what's going on. And last but not least, we can create loops. For example, in this case, we're saying there's a loop inside of this PHP script that's doing something. So the cool thing about knowing mermaid.js syntax is that it can be used in all kinds of places. GitHub has support for it in its markdown, so you can add a mermaid sequence diagram to any pull request or comment by starting a code block using three backticks and then the word mermaid. It's very strict in its formatting sometimes, so you might have to play around with it a little bit before it works. PHP Storm also has a plugin that allows us to type mermaid syntax and see the output in real time. We can even do it in a scratch file. What you need to know. Sequence diagrams are used to show interactions between elements arranged in a time sequence. We can use mermaid.js to generate them from text and are useful in a lot of places, including pull requests. I hope you enjoyed our video. If so, make sure you subscribe, comment, share, and like, as it does help others find us. Are you using sequence diagrams because of what you've learned from this video? Let me know in the comments section below. I love to hear how I'm helping you. This is Scott Keck Warren for the PHP Architect channel signing off and reminding you to keep watching, keep coding, and keep reading. Thank you.